this video we're going to cover the basics of the go button logic right we covered previously the logic uh, blocks for the other buttons as well as initialize so we're going to go through the algorithm and uh, set up the basic steps right so if you could implement the algorithm on your own that is good uh, this video will help you get started if you're struggling to get started okay so the first thing we note in the algorithm is that we need another variable right so step one is to create a variable because we're going to be comparing two numbers so we need to store the old random number in order to compare it to the new random number we'll eventually get. So if there was a 40 on the screen, as soon as we get a new random number, and it's 50 now, that 40 disappears. So in order to compare the 50 and the 40, we have to store the old value. So we'll create a variable and the old random number, call it old number. We initialize it to zero just like our random number but we're actually going to set it within our event so we have to get our event first right so our go button when it's clicked that's our event right the first thing we want to do in our event which is number two in our algorithm is update our old number to be the current value so we hover over our variable name to get the set block and then we can hover over our random number to get the get block the acquire value block and so now we've set our old number to be the current random number right so both of these at this point in time will be the same value so if 40 was in this random number variable 40 will now be in the old number variable okay the next step is to generate a random number right so we need a new one to then compare to this old one right so we already did this in initialize once right so we set the seed that just allows us to get a new set of random numbers every time we start the app to actually get a random number it's the second block and this blue part gets us a random number from 1 to 100 and then we set it into our random number variable right so now we've got an old number which may have been 40 and a new number which we can say is 50 just for uh, allow us to think about the comparisons All right so we have the two numbers now and we're on to the step where we have to actually update the screen which we won't see the updates right we don't see pauses between these all the logic in the click happens at once so everything we write here will happen at once um, including any updates to our interface so we look at our screen and we have a number label and we want to set that to our random number right so we acquired a new random number we stored it in our variable then we want to get that value and update or set our text that's on our screen uh, in the number label to be that new value okay so now we will have 50 on our screen okay so the next step asks whether we want whether we selected higher or lower and so if we look at our lower and higher clicks we actually have all the same blocks except it's green for lower or green for higher when we select it and we change the value of higher chosen 
to false if lower is chosen and true if higher is chosen. So in order to say, did we choose higher? We simply have to see if the value of higher chosen is true, right? Because we set it to true right here, which means we clicked this button or tap this button on our screen. So we go to our variable and we want to say get. So eventually we'll need to get that, right? To compare it to something. We want to compare it to true but it already is true or false, so we don't really need to compare it. We can just say, hey, is this true or is it false? Okay, so our if statement is where we ask questions. All right, so we have if and then our conditional block, and our question goes in our conditional block, and in this case, we just want to know, is this value true? or is it false? If it's true, then we go into the then. If it's false, we need to set up an else block by dragging it into here, and we have an else. All right, so now we have our basic question that says, did we press the higher button? Yes, go into the then. No, go into the else. All right, so we've set up that logic that allows us to question which button we chose higher or lower. So after that, right, we'll leave out the logic that goes inside the then and else for now. After we do that, all this logic, we want to essentially reset the interface so that the next selection can be made. Right? We've put the 50 up there, but now we need to reset the buttons higher and lower so that they're both gray because one of them was green because it was selected and the go button was made available so that the logic in go could be run with a cl click or a tap. So we want to go through and do several of the steps that were in initialize. Okay, we want to actually take the gray and the gray and the white All right so this resets the colors but we actually also need to disable our go button right so as we click our left or click our right we enable our go button so we set it to true right here we also change the text to go which means we have to reset our go buttons values to what they were to begin with because right? we don't want to be able to tap the go button without making a higher or lower selection right so we initially if we go back to our designer we initially said make your choice and it was a white button with disabled right so there was no enabled and it was a white button okay so we have white button make your choice and we want to set our enabled to false or in our design view that would uncheck the box okay so those goes through and resets the game so the next turn essentially can be made so these are the basic blocks to set up our go button okay? and then all that's left is the then and else which implement the core part of our game and so inside each of these we're going to actually uh, leave it up to you but we'll describe it here right so the first then we want to say hey we have we have the higher selected, right? This is true, which means now we have to say, is the number that was generated, is the random number, bigger than the old number? If it is, if that's true, then we were correct, and we have to output 
hey, we were correct, uh, and update the street count accordingly, add one. Uh, if we were incorrect, right, if the else case for in here, then we would set the street count to zero, and we say we were incorrect, right? Our else of this if, right, this if, is actually representing we selected the lower button, right? So if the then is the higher button, then the else is the lower button. And we go through the same logic as we, what we had in the then, except we're asking the opposite question. So in the then we asked, is the number that we got in random number higher than the old number? In the else, we asked the question, is the number that we got lower than the old number? And we act accordingly based on whether it is or isn't. Okay, so this is the setup for the go button click. And we leave the remainder up to you uh, to finish.